protect yourself against infectious diseases like coronavirus and lifestyle diseases like high blood pressure using ultra modern medical equipment such as face masks, N95 and triple face masks. Medical coverall suits and face shield masks prevents your body from getting in contact with the virus or bacteria. Often check your body temperature using infrared thermometer. Check your blood pressure using automatic blood pressure machines. This message is brought to you by Leviton Investments Limited, importers and distributors of high quality medical equipment located at Arua Park Plaza Shop number 619 and 620 Bench Wanoka Street. Leave it on. Caring for your health. Puma today is wearing dogs. He's sharing with us how he got the idea, what has changed in his life, and how has he been able to run this business sustainably to date. Hello, I go by the names of Mugisha Ismail from Great Dogs UG. I'm a dog breeder, dog lover, ah, dog everything, yeah. I've been in breeding, uh, I think my first breeding was in 2017 up to now. Dog breeding, uh, what inspired me to do dog breeding, I think it's passion. Since uh, childhood, I had a passion for dogs. You know, we grew up with dogs, I was raised with dogs, so all along I've been with dogs. Uh, most especially what inspired me is a friend. I got a friend who was already breeding way back, so I reached to him and then I had this love of dogs, so we had a jazz with a friend, and then I got inspired, So, and I was like, wow, this is a passion, then I can do something out of it. Uh, my first dog, uh, it was a Maltese, actually. Uh, that was way back in 2016. So that dog, uh, it was a hassle to get that dog. <laughs> it was a Maltese dog. Then uh, I sold that Maltese dog, and then I bought two dogs, two females, which are the Dachon and uh, Japanese Spitz. Then from there, I started with the Spitz and the Maltese dogs. After selling the Maltese, then I, I was able to raise some money to afford a Rottweiler puppy. My first Rottweiler puppy, it was at six, six weeks old. It was my boy, the big boy, Casper. Yeah, so from Casper, uh, I came on buying other dogs. I came on buying, I have Kim and she's the mother to this little girl called Funky. Yeah, so I'm specialized in Rottweilers and the German Shepherd Shoreline. I think a Rottweiler is a very nice breed, intelligent, loyal, lovely, so that's why it's my favorite, my favorite breed, yeah. Uh, what's so unique about my dogs actually is uh, I, I should talk about the temperament and the good looking of my dogs. Well cared of, very nice, well balanced temperament as you can see. Very playful, very intelligent, lovely, charming. Yeah, so this makes my dog very unique the way I socialize them. Sit! Hello. Good girl. So. When, I, when it comes to marketing, I think the market is much online. Because I have a Facebook page, which is Great Dogs UG. On Instagram, Great Dogs UG. So I think that is my market. And sometimes even recommendations. So I, go, I get uh, recommendations. Uh, so the first principle of, with me actually, the first principle, I don't compromise when it comes to dogs to feeding dogs, 
even if it needs a lot of cash, I don't compromise with feeding. Even if you're my client, you're taking a dog from me, I have to make sure you're going to give this dog the right feeding and the right care, which is getting here from Great Dogs UG. Uh, in dogs, I've achieved, I've achieved a lot. I've achieved a lot. I've, I've connected to new people, high profile people, new friends. I've traveled. Uh, and of course, I've got money, <laughs> nice experience with dogs. Of course, this is something so special. You know? This is, I think it's the most special thing about the love with my dogs, so this is just an achievement. The challenges we, which we get from these dogs, uh, I think uh, the most challenge is uh, people in Uganda have not yet get to value these dogs, understand them. You may find someone who wants a Rotwell at even uh, 200 shillings, some funny, funny man. I think people need to value this dog. We put in a lot of time a lot of money, a lot of everything in this dog, so people need to value it. And another challenge is about the dog food. Yeah, dog food is a challenge. Most times it gets cast on market. Yeah, uh, my future plans are, I think, to get registered dogs and start selling registered dogs and to get a market like African wide. I want to start exporting dogs from uh, Uganda to different countries. For example, even right now I'm exporting dogs uh, from uh, Uganda to Kenya. So, and another future plan is uh, Uganda. I think uh, we are working on a bit, very, very hard to get our own kennel club, which is going to change the dog game and everything in Uganda. Well, make money today. We're still sharing with you how you can make money, especially in challenged times like the ones we are contending with today. Don't see a lot of places that are being able to, Im to embed both as perspectives of things, the children and just let's say hospitality for adults in general. Many places are just focusing, as I said, are just focusing on mainly the the adult bits. Let's have a restaurant. Let's have a good. Let's have a good view. But not many are saying. Let's let's think about the children. Let's say. Let, do they have a swing? Do they have something that will make them have fun? Like, will we be able to attract people like children in that way? So there's a lot missing from hospitality industry in that section. And one of our biggest things we grew up hearing was, "Walk without play makes Jack a dull boy." So. Every child needs to have that point where they can come out on the weekend with their parents and say, do you know what, mum and dad are going to have fun, but I can go and be on a swing. I can be able to just scream and have fun and actually feel like I had a weekend. And there's not specialization. Children are very sensitive people. What they hear, what they do, what they say. At times they don't even know what they're saying or what they're doing. They just pick up a few things from what they see on TV, from what they do. So we need to be able to have people that are trained on ground on how to handle children. People who will know what to, like, think like a child in terms of marketing in terms of things that will attract them. I would say in general is children's market is definitely a market to be, to, that should be tapped in highly. Now, the green energy revolution is not only transforming the way we live, but then also the way we do business and also manufacturing. Today we're trying to look at how this is happening in Uganda, where a number of processors are now embracing this revolution. The uniqueness about this particular plant is basically um, about the fact that it is one of its kind in this country. Uh, there are different power plants that uh, have been constructed, but not one that is entirely running a factory a factory that is uh, working towards uh, agricultural production. This is the only uniqueness that we have here. And also the size, it is quite big. 172 kilowatts is almost uh, three times bigger than any other industrial uh, grid tied kind of uh, solar plant. Actually, uh, so much advocate for renewable energy and 
in relation to solar. Most uh, factories, they concentrate more on using hydropower and in addition to uh, the generator, the diesel generators. But because this is a coffee factory, they are looking at a very good uh, clean source of energy. That's why they decided to eliminate uh, the generator use and only include uh, the solar panels because of uh, the value that they get out of the quality of their produce. It's a very good marketing experience if the product you're producing is free from these gases that are uh, related to uh, the use of diesel generators. Uh, we have a grid tied system. Uh, we have uh, solar, uh, the solar panels in uh, working hand in hand with the grid. Ideally what happens is that uh, you have uh, production of solar during the day which is uh, being uh, working hand in hand with uh, the grid that is your umeme so when the solar uh, is very is producing power very early in the morning it's likely that the power generation will be much lower that's when now you invite in uh, umeme to come and give a top up on the energy so as you go throughout the day the solar production increases and eliminating uh, the umeme completely uh, the idea of them working together is basically because one is giving the other one a hand but the way the system is designed the priority should be the solar at a certain point during the day, maybe four to five hours during the day, like what is happening here, you have 100% production being generated by solar. That brings us to the end of this week's edition of Man and Markets. Thank you for being part of the show. Now, for any comments, questions or suggestions, don't hesitate to drop us a line on the addresses on your screen. We'd like to keep the discussion going. Until next time, I've been your host, Charles Woji. Have a good evening and bye-bye.